Nightbeat starts right now. Tonight, four additional people at Joint Base San Antonio have tested positive for COVID-19, bringing the total to 11 confirmed cases on the base. Military officials telling us these cases are not related to the cruise ship evacuees currently being quarantined at JBSA Lackland. Meanwhile, Metro Health authorities say there are now 39 positive cases of COVID-19, nine of which were contracted through community spread. And in our surrounding areas, a first case was confirmed in Guadalupe County, while a second case was reported by the city of Bernie and Kendall County. And across the rest of Texas, the State Department of Health and Human Services is reporting 304 positive cases and five deaths. Right now at KSED.com, you can find an interactive map highlighting each county affected and how many cases are being reported. Also breaking earlier tonight, Vice President Mike Pence and his wife Karen have tested negative for COVID-19. That's according to the vice president's spokesman. The tests come after one of Pence's staffers tested positive on Friday. The vice president telling reporters today that person is doing well and has not been at the White House since Monday. We'll have much more national coverage of the coronavirus crisis coming up a little bit later in this newscast. Local bars forced to close, leaving employees with an uncertain future. Yeah, the order came after San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg issued an emergency declaration Wednesday as an effort to limit social gatherings and combat against COVID-19. The 19th Steve Cavasso spoke to the owner of a local bar about what this means for his business. Hills and Dales Ice House, a popular spot on the city's northwest side, just one of many bars that have been closed the last few days. The owner says it was something he anticipated. We started hearing more about the bars shutting down in Houston, Austin, Dallas. And it was just, we just figured it was only a matter of time before San Antonio did too, you know. Justin Vitek, who has been practicing social distancing, said he took over the business three years ago. Hills and Dales established more than 50 years ago. But Vitek said he never thought the longstanding bar would be faced with something like this. We just literally, you know, we had to make as much money as we could for our staff. For the bar to be able to sustain. VTEC says the weekends are typically a busy time for his three locations, but this is what's expected this weekend after the city, county, and state issued emergency declarations that all bars were ordered to stay closed. Retail businesses like gyms, theaters, or even bingo parlors are also barred from operating. Restaurants also ordered to close their dining areas. VTEC says the change has impacted the people he employs, who look to him for answers. It was a really hard conversation to have yesterday with my staff. Uh, you know, there was a lot of tears shed from some of the employees. He says he's been helping his staff as much as he can, but knows with the doors closed, they will have to find other ways to make ends meet. You know, it's about our staff that literally they have, you know, they live, you know, off their tips. But he remains optimistic that the business will be back stronger than ever. Hopefully we'll get back sooner than later. Now, Tim Jaffney, we're here off St. Mary Street, which is typically crowded with cars, but just take a look. The streets and bars are virtually empty tonight. Now, that declaration was originally extended for seven days. However, on Thursday, City Council voted to extend it 30 days until April 19th. However, that order can be lifted earlier. Reporting live on St. Mary's Strip, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Tim Jaffney. Stephen, thank you. Through April 1st, passengers are riding via buses for free. It's all a part of the company's plan to combat the coronavirus through social distancing. Passengers we spoke with today say they're beyond thankful. For the rest of March, VIA will allow passengers to ride for free. As a part of their system-wide fare relief period, the company hopes this will help cut down on in-person interactions to combat the coronavirus pandemic that's impacting San Antonio. This fare-free service eliminates the need to use the fare box, speeds boarding, and minimizes crowding at the front door. Adam Cavasso says he rides the bus every single day. What I notice is a lot of people still stop at the, the driver, but I guess that'll like phase out pretty soon. Not only does this service protect passengers and operators, it also allows public transit to continue free of charge for those who need it the most. A lot of people are not working because of the, this virus coming in there. People can't afford transportation or nothing, so I'm glad they did it. That list includes people who rely on transit as their only means of travel to workplaces, meal distribution sites, critical service centers, or other necessary trips. The company encourages passengers as they partake in this fare relief period to continue practicing social distancing, which means staying at least six feet away from your neighbor when aboard the bus or in any other public space. 
At the start of next month, VIA plans to evaluate and provide an update for moving ahead. Nearly 1,000 military students going through medical training at Fort Sam Houston in San Antonio received 45 cases of nearly 500 jumbo-sized rolls of toilet paper, courtesy of SeaWorld. This after those students began experiencing a shortage of toilet paper due to the coronavirus pandemic and restricting them to the base. Today, SeaWorld and military members joined to load the much needed supplies, which were later distributed to those medical trainees. And they just really give back to the military and they're continuing to do so uh, for us now in our time of need. And I think that goes a long way and that'll be a working relationship from here on out. The cry for help came through a connected network of San Antonio businesses and nonprofit organizations in an attempt to help the students who will eventually be deployed around the world. It's not just food that you can pick up curbside right now. A new local brewery is taking a beer to go approach after Mayor Ron Nirenberg ordered all dining restaurants and bars be closed. The owners of Black Laboratory Brewing purchased a can seamer that can cap off more than 1,000 cans of beer. They also plan to have stickers made for the beer. The owners say these are moves that can keep their beer and their cash flowing. We'll also be having a pickup table, so we'll put your beers on the pickup table. When they're on there, we'll call your name and you can come pick them up and uh, there'll be no interaction, basically. After being closed just days after having their first opening last Saturday, the owners say their outlook on business has changed tremendously. A benefit many aren't able to take advantage of due to so many closings and social distancing are the low gas prices, which only continue to drop across the U.S. amid the crisis. Right now, the national average price for gas is $2.15. Here in Texas, it's $1.87. But here in Bear County, the average is even lower, sitting at just over $1.78. According to AAA, prices at the pump could drop another 40 to 70 cents per gallon in the next month or two. We want to remind you the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center is extending its blood drive through next week in hopes of building a 20 day supply. The upcoming drive will be moved from the Alamo Dome to the San Antonio Shrine Auditorium from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Donations are by appointment only. We have all the information for you to be able to sign up on our website at ksat.com. And if you're wanting to stay up to date on all things coronavirus, look no further than KSAT.com. We have so many resources and stories posted, including the one on your screen about an inmate at federal jail in New York City becoming the first confirmed case within the federal prison system. We'll have much more on the coronavirus crisis coming up. Turning now to other top stories of the day, San Antonio police say a panhandler accused of kicking a driver's car is in critical condition tonight after that driver allegedly shot that man three times in the chest. The shooting happened just after noon today in Alamo Plaza. The driver, a man in his 60s, told police he was stopped at a light when the man approached his car asking for money. The driver said he ignored the man while he banged on his window first. That's when police say the man began kicking the driver's car, which then led to the shooting. The panhandler was taken to the hospital in critical condition. It's unclear right now what, if any, charges will be filed against the driver. A driver who police say hit and killed a woman last night on the southeast side is still on the loose. The hit and run happened around 1030 on South WW White Road. San Antonio police say a woman in her late 50s was walking on the side of the road when she was hit. Witnesses who saw the woman lying on the ground called police. She was pronounced dead at the scene. Good evening. We're taking a look outside with live cam. Not a whole lot to see. It's still pretty messy out there. And I know these days being able to spend at least a little bit of time outside, taking the dog for a walk, getting the kids in the backyard is so important today. Obviously not a great day to get that done, but we did get some much needed rainfall today. Overnight things will be staying overcast. Drizzle and fog will continue to be possible and temperatures will actually maybe steadily climb a few degrees through early tomorrow morning. We'll start you off in the morning uh, just shy of 60 degrees but it'll be warmer tomorrow afternoon and I promise you'll be able to get outdoors for a little bit on your Sunday as we wrap up the weekend. But look at this steep climb in afternoon high temperatures. Yes, pushing 90 by the middle of next week. We'll talk about your full forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. Still to come on the night beat, citizens in six states now ordered to stay in their homes amid the coronavirus crisis. This is negotiations are underway on Capitol Hill for an economic relief package. Plus, a touching message from a longtime friend and collaborator of Kenny Rogers, who died yesterday. But first, millions across the country now find themselves unemployed. After the break, that plus other ways the coronavirus crisis is affecting everyday life for Americans.
Millions of Americans suddenly out of work, losing their jobs overnight and now rushing to file for unemployment. Here's ABC's Zoreen Shaw. Three million Americans are expected to file unemployment claims next week. Tonight, Michigan, Minnesota and Connecticut all seeing a spike in jobless claims. This Huntington Beach brewery owner laying off his own family. We may have laid off our four sons, but we still get together here at work each day. We find things to do. The nation's biggest cities shut down as more states order non-essential businesses to close their doors. This movie theater in Hollywood with the message, stay safe. The normally bustling New Orleans French Quarter just weeks ago filled with Mardi Gras revelers is now a ghost town. But amid all the negative headlines, glimmers of hope, small businesses stepping up. I think anybody that finds themselves in a war, and we're in a world war right now, uh, if they can, they step up. Chicago's Cobalt Distillery, known for high-end whiskey, now making hand sanitizer. We've completely shifted all production to be making this. We're on a normally packed Hollywood and Highland. Shops here boarded up, clearly a sign of the times. Now the government is working on a bill to get checks to Americans, depending on how much you make. Zorin Shah, ABC News, Los Angeles. Turning to the weather now, it was a very gray and chilly day out there, but we got some good rain, Katie. Oh yeah, much needed rainfall. I know it kind of kept everyone cooped up today. That time to get out and get the kids in the backyard for a little bit, get the dog out for a walk is critical these days. And I promise tomorrow will be a better day to do that. But today a mainly gray day, but we did see some more much needed rainfall. Here's the time lapse starting from this morning. We had a batch of shower and thunderstorm activity move in from the south. That was mid to late morning and it was around through late afternoon. And since then uh, we've had some really low clouds settling in. And limiting visibility and keeping drizzle around South Texas. Our low temperature this morning, just 50 degrees and the warmest we got this afternoon, 54. So remember uh, last week when we were trending above average high temperature wise? Well, today we were nearly 20 degrees below average, but don't worry, we're going to turn things around on you as we get into next week. Very cool out there. Still a few upper 40s there in the hill country, 50, uh, 55 in New Braunfels for your high temperature. So everyone trending well below average temperature wise on this Saturday. A look at some of the observed rainfall totals. So these were uh, either measured by certain sites out there or you sent them into us uh, here in the weather center. Uh, the biggest swath of rain today was obviously down to the southeast of San Antonio where some of that heavier rain and a few thunderstorms were. Floresville, your 24 hour rainfall total 1.35 inches, uh, a little bit more than a half inch of rain in Luling here in San Antonio, a little bit more than a quarter inch of rain. We will take that, but I want to take you to the past three days, 72 hour precip. This is our radar estimated uh, precipitation here and where you see those green colors. That's between one and two inches of rain. We had a nice swath of that off to the southeast and also up through Valverde County and through a portion of the hill country. A couple of holes there along Highway 90 west of San Antonio and then in southern Maverick County. But overall, the past few days have proved very beneficial for some dry South Texas ground where you see this red color here on the drought monitor. Uh, those are places that are in extreme drought and I'm about to overlay that 72 hour rainfall and you can see sw a sweet spot here down in Atascosa County, Live Oak County there toward the coastal bend. So some spots that really needed rain did get it over the past couple of days and it's still messy out there, but there's not a whole lot to see on radar in our part of the state. That's because that heavier rain and the thunderstorm activity has moved off into central and east Texas. Radar is picking up though a few little green little blips there. That is some very, very light rainfall that continues to filter on through and our sensor at the airport is picking up on rain, but this is just some drizzle that has continued to fall this evening. Air temp of 53, a dew point of 50 degrees. So our air temperatures are fairly close to where our dew points are. That is important because as those two numbers get closer together, that's when fog begins to develop. And we do have some patchy fog out there. Looks like the densest fog is down near Victoria. Elsewhere, things are okay right now. But as we head through the overnight hours, I wouldn't be surprised to see some dense fog develop in spots, at least patchy fog possible for everyone overnight. So we'll keep the fog and drizzle around through early tomorrow morning. And Sunday will be pretty gray through the first part of the day. But by the afternoon, we are expecting some clearing. So that's when you'll be able to get everyone outside for a little bit. 
it. And it's also going to be much warmer tomorrow as a result with high temperatures in the low to mid 70s. So a great start to the day tomorrow. I also can't rule out a few isolated showers tomorrow uh, east of the I 35 corridor, but we're not going to see the measurable rainfall that we saw today. Heading into Monday afternoon, even more clearing during the second part of the day will give way to high temperatures working into the low 80s. And look at this warm up next week. Upper level high pressure settles in. We'll see a big change in our weather pattern. That's going to lend itself to a lot of sunshine and high temperatures pushing 90 by Wednesday. So we're turning things around on you pretty Good quickly Lord. here. So it's going to warm us up real soon, huh? Yes. <laughs> All right, Katie, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, just take it, Gerber. <laughs> hey, it's time to talk sports. Larry's just getting in here. So he's going to talk about UTSA football, no spring ball, which means... <laughs> <laughs> figure out what he has. How am I doing, Larry? So far, you're so doing good? great. I don't want to get too close to you, though. Social distancing. <laughs> Will NBA players get paid through <laughs> for you? Coming up next. San Antonio Spurs will get their next paychecks, but after that, it's unclear. In a memo sent to all 30 NBA teams Friday, the league said players will get paid April 1st, but left open the possibility of recovering future salaries for canceled games on April 15th. The coronavirus is causing the league to lose a lot of money, so the NBA could get money back based on a provision in the collective bargaining agreement. Each player could be docked some pay for each game canceled. The provision encompasses several scenarios, including war, natural disasters, and epidemics, pandemics. The NBA plans to inform teams and players their plans before April 15th. And here's a great tweet from Manu Ginobili. In times of social distance, don't be distant emotionally. Use technology to connect with people you appreciate and love. We all need encouragement and support. Stay connected. The picture features Manu, Patty Mills, Boris Dio, and Tiago Splitter. Mills tweeted a similar picture with the four guys drinking coffee, of course. Earlier this week, we caught up with Neville Shedd, a member of the 1966 Texas Western basketball team that defeated Kentucky 72-65, the win at all, the first team in NCAA history to feature an all-African-American starting five. Thursday was the 54th anniversary of that game. Shed feels for all the college players who won't get to experience the Sweet 16, the Final Four, or the thrill of winning the national championship. For something like this to happen, just to close our minds physically of the accomplishments that they have been working on to get to that point, it's a, it's a very painful thing. But when they sit down and say, hey, you know, we worked hard for this. You know, we worked hard for this here. We represented our universities, our families, and knowing that it is not the end of the world. Hey, I got that education behind me, and it's going to take me more and more to another uh, part of my road to glory. Great words right there. Texas Western is now the University of Texas at El Paso. UTSA head football coach Jeff Trailer wants to be on the field working out with his guys, but spring ball was wiped out because of the coronavirus pandemic. This means coach is missing out on valuable teaching time on the field as he learns his new team and vice versa. The Roadrunners are still learning the playbook thanks to video conferences, but these young men need to get on the field to run, throw, catch, and make mistakes now. Plus, Coach Trailer cannot be as hands-on as he normally likes. Teaching via FaceTime, etc. is just a little bit different. The best way to teach is, you know, hands on and kids out there doing it and videoing them and yeah. watching themselves and making them think it's their idea. In this situation, it's going to be more old school, chalk talk, dry erase, video. It's just not the best way, but it's the best way we have right now. And we just got to stay in that mindset uh, of just trying to do the very best we can today. And our whole culture is about winning today, going 1 0 today. Coach Trailer reaches out to 10 of his players each day and five Texas high school football coaches. He's certainly doing his best to stay positive and keep in touch during this tough time. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. And the Houston Texans have officially traded wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins to the Arizona Cardinals for running back David Johnson. The team emailed a release today listing a number of moves, including Hopkins for Johnson. Texans fans are not happy with head coach and general manager Bill O'Brien for sending the Texans' best wide receiver packing. 
The Texans also announced they've agreed to terms with receiver Randall Cobb and cornerback Philip Gaines from Judson High School. And longtime Chargers quarterback Philip Rivers said he considered retiring before he signed his one year $25 million deal with the Indianapolis Colts. Rivers is 38 years old and says he can still play at a high level. The Texans will see Rivers at least twice next season. And the San Antonio Missions grounds crew is still busy keeping the field ready, even though the start of the regular season, hopefully, you know, is coming soon, but just still several weeks away. Got to have that grass ready to go. Yeah, you do. All right. Thanks, Larry. You got it. Next on the Night Beat, the FDA approves a new faster testing kit for COVID-19. How soon it will be available? And the world loses a legend. Here for music icon Dolly Parton as she remembers her dear friend Kenny Rogers, who died in his home yesterday at the age of 81. The latest now on the coronavirus pandemic in the United States, the number of those infected now passed 25,000, according to Johns Hopkins University. Yeah, it is the third highest total in any country in the world. Here's ABC's Karina Mitchell with the latest. President Trump speaking from the White House press briefing room Saturday, applauding the nationwide effort during the COVID-19 crisis. Governors, mayors, the businesses, charities and citizens are all working with urgency and speed toward one common goal, which is saving American lives. Lawmakers are working on a bipartisan COVID-19 economic relief package that could cost more than $1 trillion. The White House Coronavirus Task Force addressing concerns over shortages of medical supplies for health care workers. ABC's Trevor Alt pressed for a timeline on when these supplies will be available. We'll prioritize uh, those scarce resources because every single governor across the country is looking for the exact same thing. So. New York State now declared a major disaster area. I'm considering other areas where we may or may not be doing that. And i um, working very closely with Gavin Newsom, governor of California and others. Amid shortages, some distilleries are shifting gears. Instead of turning out alcohol to drink, now making hand sanitizer. I think anybody that finds themselves in a war, and we're in a world war right now, uh, if they can, they step up. On Saturday, New Jersey becoming the sixth state to close all non-essential businesses, joining California, New York, Illinois, Pennsylvania, and Nevada. More than 84 million Americans are now under state directives to stay home. Any place people congregate is a place where coronavirus can be spread. That was ABC's Karina Mitchell reporting. As cases rise here in the U.S., doctors in two of the country's largest cities are now changing their testing strategy. Health officials in New York City and Los Angeles are now recommending <clears throat> doctors avoid testing patients, except in cases where the result would significantly change treatment. The thinking behind that change is that testing consumes personal protective equipment like masks and gowns during a time when healthcare workers around the country are sounding the alarm. Hospitals are running out of supplies, but the White House Coronavirus Task Force says those much needed supplies are on the way. HHS just placed a pour, pour an order for hundreds of millions of N95 masks that will be being made available to health care providers across the country. Meanwhile, President Trump urging Americans to heed warnings from federal health officials today. More than one fifth of Americans were under orders to stay home. Also new on the testing front, the first rapid diagnostic test for COVID-19 has been approved by the FDA. The new test can detect COVID-19 in about 45 minutes. The California-based company, which makes the test, says they can start shipping next week. Clinicians say faster testing will help alleviate some of the pressure on those precious hospital resources we just mentioned. Last night during KSAT News at 9, Steve Spreester spoke with a local emergency room doctor about his concerns related to testing and what people need to know about this virus. Dr. Robert Florickstein uh, says that Methodist ER has been preparing for COVID-19 for weeks now and numbers of patients have been low. Uh, when it comes to testing in the ER, they have them available for patients admitted to the hospital. The doctor says if you are sick or believe you have COVID-19 symptoms to not just show up to the emergency room. Instead, follow these steps. See your personal physician, or if you don't have one, we do have the ability to see you via telemedicine. And if 
necessary and if it makes sense we can order or at least uh, refer you to the San Antonio Metropolitan Health District to to get evaluated for testing. Again you must have a doctor's order to get the test. The doctor also says to take social distancing seriously because it will flatten the curve of infected people which in turn will help save lives. That doctor's response came from a popular question being asked by you, our viewers. If you have questions you'd like answered, you can submit them now or anytime online at ksat.com. Just click SAQ under the Features tab. I loved Kenny with all my heart. My heart's broken, and a big old chunk of it has gone with him today. And I think that I can speak for all his family, his friends and fans when I say that I will always love you. Dolly Parton remembering her dear friend Kenny Rogers today. The legendary singer died Friday. His family announced on Twitter he died from natural causes at home surrounded by family. The Grammy Award winner was known for chart toppers like The Gambler, Lady, and Islands in the Stream. Rogers' career spanned more than six decades. He had 24 number one hits and had been voted favorite singer of all time in joint poll by readers of both USA Today and People. Rogers was 81. Still ahead, one of the questions we get here a lot at KSAT is the COVID-19 the same as the flu? A closer look at how they stack up next. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. There are still a lot of questions surrounding coronavirus, and one of the questions we get asked a lot from our viewers is, is it the same as the flu? Well, it's not. This week on KSAT News at 9 Understand series, RJ Marquez broke down why health experts say it is much worse and helps us understand some of the major differences. Take a look. <laughs> Some of the symptoms are similar, like fever and cough, but there are major differences between COVID-19 and the seasonal flu, and what this new disease does to a person's body and to those around them. Researchers with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention say that right now, on average, a person with COVID-19 will infect two and a half people. For the seasonal flu, it's 1.3. Another major difference, the incubation time, which is defined as the time from first exposure to first symptoms. According to the National Center for Biotechnology in information for the seasonal flu you're looking at one to four days with most people showing symptoms in about two days for COVID-19 the virus can remain in a person's body for up to 14 days before they show any symptoms the next two stats are key the first one is the hospitalization rate according to the CDC it's about 20 percent for someone infected with COVID-19 compared to just two percent for the flu second the fatality rate for confirmed cases it's one to three point four percent right now for people infected with the new coronavirus and point one or less for someone with the flu the virus is also deadlier for people older than 80. This is not meant to downplay the flu in the U.S., which kills thousands of people every year. But keep in mind, there is currently no vaccine for COVID-19. And since this is a new virus, humans have not built an immunity to it. I'm RJ Marcus. To see more stories like this, watch KSAT News at 9, Monday through Friday. A look outside with live cam. Can't see the top of the Tower of the Americas there because we've got our cloud heights that are fairly low, kind of distorting the view there. Still some light off and on drizzle across South Texas, but we're done with the heavier rain and storms that were around earlier today, but that rain very beneficial for us uh, for our dry South Texas ground. Visibility right now is okay. It's lower down closer to the coast, but overnight tonight I expect fog to become a bit more widespread and it certainly could be dense in spots through early tomorrow. So fog and drizzle remain in the forecast overnight through early Sunday. It will be warmer tomorrow, but it is going to be much warmer in the next several days as a weather pattern change kicks in. We'll talk more about that and get you a look at what you can expect next week coming up in just a few minutes. Well, I woke up this morning a bit chilly, but hey, I had the joy of walking outside to some lovely rainy weather. It was so nice. A great day to binge watch, mm -hmm. book, things like that. And typically on Saturday nights, I'll give you a look ahead to your Sunday brunch forecast. Obviously, things are a bit different this week, but don't forget you can still support our local restaurants and businesses. Maybe go pick up brunch to go tomorrow. I'm not sure of any specific restaurants doing that, but 
hey, it's worth looking into, right? If you do step out briefly uh, tomorrow during the first part of the day, it is still going to be cloudy and on the cooler side with some patchy fog and drizzle around earlier in the morning. But as we get into the early afternoon, after lunchtime, we'll start to see some peaks of sunshine and things will begin to warm up. So you will be able to get out uh, a bit tomorrow, soak up a little bit of sun as we see partly to mostly cloudy skies in the afternoon with high temperatures in the low to mid 70s for most of us. South winds settling in tomorrow. They'll be on the light side just around five miles per hour. I do think by this time tomorrow night we could see some more patchy fog beginning to develop and we'll have another pretty messy start to the day on Monday with some more fog uh, and maybe some mist around before things clear out even more. Monday afternoon. The rain that came through South Texas and San Antonio earlier today made it all the way up into North Texas, moved through parts of the Metroplex. Now it's in East Texas heading over to Louisiana. So I mentioned we're done with the heavier rain, but some off and on drizzle will continue to be possible overnight. And it has been a very cool day all across Texas. So it wasn't just here at home. We're in the low 50s now. They're also in the low 50s up in DFW, 40 in Lubbock. 37 in Amarillo, so the whole state uh, much cooler than average for this time of year and across the country. There's that batch of rain that came through South Texas earlier this morning. It'll continue to move off toward uh, the Mississippi River. I want to show you what's going on in the upper levels of the atmosphere, the jet stream or the steering flow, and we do have a little dip here over North Texas. That's what helped to sustain those showers and storms as they move through earlier today. So the jet stream flow providing a little bit of lift here for that rain. As we get into next week, we're going to see our weather pattern change a little bit. So this past week we had pretty persistent action off to the west that allowed for chances of showers and storms for several days. Uh, things will begin to change though as we get into tomorrow and Monday. Upper level high pressure, which typically spells very quiet sunny and warm weather for us will begin to affect more of our weather forecast as we get into Tuesday and the middle part of next week. So that's going to keep us unseasonably warm. So we'll flip the switch from unseasonably cool today to unseasonably warm by the middle of next week. That upper level high will hang around through Thursday or so. Then it will be suppressed to the east just a little bit. Upper level low begins to move in from the west and that will be our next shot and maybe a few more isolated showers in another frontal boundary, but that won't be until the end of next week. So tomorrow we'll start you off upper 50s near 60 low to mid 70s in the afternoon after some morning fog and drizzle into Monday. Another round of some morning fog then breaking through to more afternoon sunshine that takes us into the low 80s and then the warming trend continues Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday high temperatures in the upper 80s and low 90s, but it'll be toward the end of next week and the start of next weekend. Sorry, push one too many buttons there uh, that we'll start to see a very small chance of rain work back into the forecast guys. So it's time to bring out the slip and slide. Uh, yeah, Kitty. <laughs> push the button the that fast hose. forwarded us to uh, summer. It looks like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stop pushing those buttons. Okay, okay. All right. Larry was not out here in time to make it to the tease last time. Well, he was, but <laughs> yeah. you just let me take over. Yeah, I was standing I'm not going to steal your thunder this nah, time. Well, you know. I, I like the way you did it, though. Well, thank you. You are a tease master, a that's for sure. <laughs> you know, the Dallas Cowboys need a new slot receiver, and they missed out on a pretty good one that's out there. Plus, the mission's grass. Out at the Wolf is ready to play ball. Coming up. Pro football coverage. Powered by Davis Law Firm. Wide receiver Emmanuel Sanders reportedly passed on both the Dallas Cowboys and Green Bay Packers to join Drew Brees and the New Orleans Saints pending a physical. It's a reported two-year $16 million deal worth up to $19 million. Bucks. The former SMU starter was selected by the Pittsburgh Steelers in the third round of the 2010 NFL Draft. He's 33 years old and experienced a rebirth after the Broncos traded him to the 49ers during last season. With Randall Cobb leaving the Cowboys for the Texans, Sanders would have been a nice addition, but the boys likely couldn't offer Sanders the same type of salary the Saints did. Quarterback Colt McCoy has agreed to a one-year deal with the New York Giants and will likely back up starter Daniel Jones. Colt is 33 years old and spent the past six seasons with the Washington Redskins. The former University of Texas star has appeared in 40 games during his nine-year NFL career. The Ottawa Senators say another one of their players tested positive for COVID-19, bringing the total number of known NHL cases to two. 
This comes four days after the Senators announced its first positive test result. The team says the player was part of the Senators' road trip March 7th through 11, which visited San Jose, Anaheim, and Los Angeles. The team says 52 people were on that trip and eight have been tested with two positive results. The other 44 people on the trip have shown no symptoms, but were told to self-quarantine. The coronavirus outbreak has led to the closure of the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs, Colorado, and the move has left 2020 Olympic athletes in limbo. And because of this, USA Swimming and USA Track and Field are calling on Olympic officials to not push forward, asking for the Tokyo 2020 Games to be postponed. The chiefs of USA Swimming and USA Track and Field both sent letters to the U.S. Olympic and Paralympic Committee asking for the Games, which start in July, to be postponed. I just want to take a stance of saying things need to get postponed because nothing's fair, nothing's equal. We need everyone to take this time, you know, put this behind us before we can actually take the necessary steps to prepare for a big competition like our trials or our, the Olympic Games. U.S. Olympic and Paralympic Committee CEO Sarah Hirschland said in a statement that more clarity is needed before making such a decision. With Major League Baseball suspending all live game action until May or later, the San Antonio Missions and the rest of Minor League Baseball are caught in limbo waiting to see when their season will begin. And while players and coaches need the proper amount of time to build into the season, the groundskeeper's schedules haven't changed at all. In fact, as head groundskeeper Travis Jocelyn says, in order to get the field ready for the original opening day on April 9th, their process began months ago. We're still basically having to get ready for that date, and then from there we'll just have to maintain it. And, you know, just people get sick, the grass doesn't stop growing, you know. Uh, it's kind of the easiest way to do it. So we're still mowing it every day. We're still fertilizing it on our schedule that we set months ago, and uh, we're just going to see it through. I mean, we, we schedule it out till the end of September, so yeah, that's, it's going to be the same for us. What uh, The variable certainly has changed for those guys out there, and they're doing a great job keeping it ready to go. Hey, you know what's not canceled? What? Silly Sock Sunday. That's right. So if you don't watch our early show on Sundays, tune in. Larry and I are still doing Silly Socks. <laughs> Absolutely. It's fun. That's All right, fun. guys. Thanks. Still ahead, why this couple was screaming their I do's in the middle of the street.